what's going on people uh this is the back page obviously it's your boy qualms um i'm here we got special guests obviously like i'll go into obviously we got lola on the other side of me but in the middle we have uh Boy, I, I don't even know where to start. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't oh, believe man. it. Like when when I saw the name come up, uh, when Sammy said that we managed to get you know a big a big footballer for me, he's a big footballer. I'm a big fan of him. Um, we managed to get him in. I was thinking, rah, like we've got so many questions, but even just sitting next to him now, I can just feel this the Premier League greatness. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no, it's not even no, no disrespect or anything like that. Honestly, like I'm being I'm being serious. Like it's such an honour to sit next to someone who's who's actually played in the game like at the top level. You know, he's played against some greats. He's done great things as well, not just on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well. And hopefully at the end of this podcast, we'll be able to uh, dissect everything that he does and, you know, find, finally find out what is, who is Kevin Lisby. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give to you Kevin Lisby, man. Let's Woo! give a round of applause, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming, man. Um, so, obviously, for us, like, I've done a little bit of research, or we all done a little bit of research, but... For me, like we'll start from where you grew up. I heard that you grew up in Hackney, so like whereabouts in Hackney, you know? Like, yeah, you... so I'm, I'm originally, first of all, nice to be here. For, I'm you, from mate. Holly Street. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was worse when I was a when I was a young boy as well. So yeah, um, yeah, it's just a, another another black boy just trying to, you know what I mean? Trying to keep his head above water, mm, trying to mm. keep myself out of trouble, trying and do do good, try and make my um, family proud, and mm. um, thank God I've managed to succeed and, and That's it, man. continue. That's it. What what was it like? Like I mean, like Holly Street. I hear stories. <laughs> I've got friends, you know, that were brought up in Holly Street. But for you, like, what was it like? You know, obviously, like you're trying to manoeuvre through, you know, the good and the bad, but managing to prevail also in football, like. How did it start for you in terms of football? Like, what is it that you used to get up to? Um, yeah, with, with me, it's, I've told the story plenty of times. I was, I was literally probably one of the younger boys and always wanting to play with the older boys. Mm. Um, and I remember one of the first things they saying to me is, "Look, if you can't tan- handle the hit, don't play." <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's real, isn't it? It's real. Um, I think that's what our kids are missing now. So, mm. um, so I just sort of sort of gradually got involved in football with the olders and they sort of mentored me mm-hmm. they sort of helped me as i went along mm-hmm. um developed my game mm-hmm. even though you don't realize at the time um but they they turned me into the probably the player i was and even when i see them now i still got so much love and respect for them because um you know what i mean through a hard time through holly street and, mm. and east london they helped me through any any sort of problems i was the the young one they took care of and right 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 they made sure i was always safe because they they could see the um they could see the, the treasure the, you yeah, the, yeah exactly <laughs> the they could see the one, talent the in me and, and they were almost they were almost like my father figures um they didn't always have my dad around okay. but um they they made sure i had everything i needed and they and they had me and they took care of me so as, as much as know people say it was bad but for me um it was a family for yeah me and and that's what got me through it yeah no no definitely definitely um so like in terms of football like when did you Fall, first fall in love with football like what was your moment like what was the moment for you um i remember just dragging my uncle out every single time i was got home just saying look can we go and play football can we go and play football mm. and it's only now that i'm a dad and i have four boys and a girl that i actually <laughs> realize how tiring it must have been, <laughs> must have been for him because um i was relentless man i was always on it um and it was never a thing where i wanted to become a professional footballer i just wanted to play football mm. um and i think that's the difference sometimes just just trying to appreciate the game, loving the game, mm. um, enjoying it, which is what I did for a good few years. And then, mm. um, yeah, the fo- football sort of picked me. I didn't pick it, it picked me. I remember playing in Hackney Marshes mm. for, my, for my local team, Beaumont. Um, Beaumont. And the scat, who said he was watching the game next to mine. Yeah. He said that he turned around for two or three minutes to watch my game. He saw me play and he said he ended up watching my whole game. Um, wow. I did, yeah. So I didn't even know he was a Charlton scout at the time. So after the game, he just said to me, look, um, would you mind coming down to Charlton for a trial? Mm. Um, went down there and obviously being a young black boy from Hackney, mm. like no fear at all. <laughs> no fear. And that's what they love. All the confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I wasn't arrogant with it. I wasn't ignorant. I always was trying to develop um, and I always wanted to get better. And I think they saw that in me. Mm. Um, and yeah, the journey just, it moved quite quickly. From then? Yeah, from yeah, it moved really quickly because as I say, I, I was 16 at the time, 15, 16 at mm. the time, funny mm. enough. 
So I know these kids nowadays, they start football from 12 and 13. Yeah, so you was like a yeah, late boomer was, in a Yeah, sense. I was a late boomer and I, got, I went straight into it. Wow. Straight into it. Um, I got my scholarship um, after about three months. Mm -hmm. um, so then obviously it becomes full time. Yeah. Um, when you're 16, it becomes full time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got my professional contract after two to three months. Mm. Which is which is that really is, quick. That is very considering quick. Considering they give you two years to get it, mm. um, and then I got into the first team, in and around the first team at 16, 17. Um, never looked back after that, and wow. my career just went on and on and on. So, like for you, obviously, you know, you grew up in Hackney, then you you, you get chosen to play for the Charlton Academy. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel at that point that transition from the academy to the first team, or from the streets to the academy to the first team? Did you feel out of sorts? Did you feel like, well, these boys? I've been in the academy for a number of years. You know, I'm just coming in. Mm. Did you did you feel confident in yourself? What was it that you think helped you get through that? I think I was just so confident in my talent mm. that nothing else mattered. Mm. Um, you speak to a lot of people, little kids now. They've got so much issues. Um, they've got so many things going on in their head. I I literally had confidence in myself, mm. and that's all that mattered. Um, whether or not it was <laughs> overconfidence or whatever, but it allowed me. It allowed me to play first team football, it allowed me to, to get into the first team and when I got into the first team it allowed me not to be intimidated as well mm. um, because as I, said, I played with grown men mm. so it wasn't an issue. Mm. Um, I saw it as we were all equals and man is man and I've played against man before, it doesn't matter how good you are, mm. it matters how good I was um, and that's all I believed in um, and due to obviously my confidence mm -hmm. um, I think my career went really really quickly because of that um, yeah. and I wasn't I wasn't overconfident mm. um, I think I had enough and I had good friends around me always good. Um, they always put me down to earth when I felt like <laughs> I was getting a bit too big so I, I was I was in Hackney but I stayed in Hackney I never moved out so right. I was quite a humble young boy as well do you think that helped you oh like, definitely, with that definitely. Well? yeah 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 my friends helped me I mean the players lounge was quite funny because obviously you got all like professionals and then mm. you could tell which what, which people were mine. <laughs> like, they're normally in the, in the corner making up bare noise. And when you walk into the players' dance, you could hear them before you see them. Mm. Um, but they were just good for me. They kept me grounded and they, they kept me um, believing in myself. Mm. And um, I never really, as I said, never got overconfident because they were always around me. Mm. Did you, so obviously, your, can you remember your first game for Charlton, your first professional game? For can you remember it? How how was it as a? Because obviously I'm I'm a big football fan. Obviously mm. I've always played football since I've been young. Mm. That feeling that you have was it was it nerves? Was it you know how did you feel before you started or even when you said you saw that your name you got chosen you mm. got selected in the squad? Yeah, I'm, I, I I don't remember too much about it to be honest. I remember playing. Mm. It's almost like I was just got dropped onto the pitch. I think as he told me I was in the squad. I think I erased all that from my memory. All that, <laughs> the only thing I actually remember was. Um, playing the game. Mm. That's what I remember. I remember the, the crowd, I remember the first time the crowd obviously screamed my name. Mm. And then you think, I'm only 16, 17, and you've got big people in the crowd calling my name. And it just, <laughs> it felt like, obviously not not having my dad around, it just felt like you belong somewhere. And, yeah. um, and they felt they felt like a family, even, yeah. though, even though they're not, believe you me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fans are not your they family. They can quickly turn Yeah, yeah exactly. We'll get to but, Yeah, we'll but so can your family, innit? So, mm, that's true, um, very true. Yeah, so um, yeah, it, it happened quite quick. I remember my premiership, mm -hmm. my first premiership start um, against Man City. Yeah, I remember that. The first we got back into the premiership, mm -hmm. and the manager bought he bought I think four strikers in, and obviously right. I was the young striker, so I was nowhere near the first team. I was mm -hmm. in and around it, but I was, it was never gonna be on the bench or start. Mm -hmm. And then um, a week before the, the game. Three strikers got injured. <laughs> and, um, yeah, exactly. So then he called me on the on the on the Friday in his office and just said, "Look, Kev, um, we're going to play you." Mm. Uh, do you know what I mean? I remember him saying that. And I don't think I remember much about that that day mm. and the day after that. I only remember, as I say, um, the game itself. Wow. Um, and I got got man in the match. We beat Man City. Yeah. Four, four one. I yeah. think it was. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's correct. Um, but I just remember that feeling of when I was on the pitch, just actually. Um, is this it? Mm. Like, like you, you sort of build up these occasions much more in your head than it actually is. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in, at home thinking about it, you're, you're thinking about playing against six foot six men who are quicker than you, stronger than you, mm -hmm. and and in actual fact they're just yeah, Same. just yeah, they're, yeah. Um, and what was important for me was just to make sure that I was ready for it. It didn't matter what anyone else 
was going to do. If I was if I was on it and I was on my game, mm. um, I could, I would be a handful, and I, and I knew I would have a good game. And and the older I got, the more I realised it actually it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter how good someone else is. It matters how you prepare for it. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Mentally, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and physically as well. Course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I, so um, obviously, like you talk about, um, you not having your dad around and mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. How how was it? Kind of like trying to maintain um, the the professionalism and the support. Like, what kind of support did you have to kind of like keep you on, you know, mm. on level straight grounds and a straight mm. path? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's quite important. That I, I mean, I I mentor a lot of kids now. I speak to young kids, and um, there's different different dads in it, different mm -hmm. fathers, and it doesn't always have to be a, a blood, like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, the person that actually brought you into this earth to be a, a father. You, As I say, I had, I think I had six or seven dads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. And it was just important for me to realise the good people in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and not dwell on the fact that I didn't have, obviously, my dad around, mm -hmm. if that made sense. Um, and it, I just, as I say, I was just such a positive person that um, I always looked for the positive, yeah. And um, the fact that I had so many good people around me was enough for me. Yeah. I think the more as you get older, you realise actually, yeah, why wasn't you around mm -hmm. at the time? Mm -hmm. It was literally I'm getting on with it, and I've got a journey. I've got a, I've got things I want to do. I can't. You can't let that cripple you, and it. It's, after a while, it all becomes excuses, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you allow that to be an excuse, when you get older, no one. Will, after a while, stop. People stop listening to your excuses, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So you've you got to create your own path and. So you can't let things that have um, affected your life hold you back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For you, you, so you said you came in and you said the manager brought, obviously, you were playing along big men, you know, um, big strikers, yeah. but was there anyone that, when you got into the club, into the first team, was there anyone that put their arms around you and became that role model as well? Yeah, I, I, to be fair, I speak to um, Mark Bright, uh, um, yes, yes, Chris yes. Powell, yes. Um, Cole Lieben, I don't know if you know Cole Lieben, that's what oh, he used yeah. to play for. So, like I was quite fortunate. Like Charlton was South London, and it so there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of like role models. Yeah. Yes. Um, and yeah, they did teach me. I remember one of the, the older pros. One of the, the like I remember I called him by his first name. I remember just walking up to him and just saying, um, "How you doing, Keith?" And he was like, "Like." Who, like who are you to call me by my first name? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like little things like that. Like and it is, isn't it? It's, mm. it's like yeah, he's a grown man to me. Like first of all, find out mm. how he likes to be addressed. Yeah, little yeah, things yeah. like that, innit? Like I know it seems like I know it seems like he's overdoing it, but it is respect, innit? Yeah, of course, um, of course. And they and as I went on, just little things they would teach me. Mm. At the time, it seemed like they were. Um, they were picking on me or you could say bully me or whatever but mm. they were actually teaching me to become a better footballer yeah. and to become a better human being more important, of course. importantly of course. um and yeah i still speak to them now even when i was at um Leighton orient and sheffield united came in to buy me and mm. i think i was 36 at the time wow and they tried to buy me because i was doing work at Leighton orient mm -hmm. and i called mark bright and as a 36 year old i'm still calling someone yeah, yeah still for calling them for advice, advice. Mm. do you know yeah. what i mean like so I, was, I mean, yeah, they they will they will, they all come to my foot if these are people that will, will be in my life forever. Mm. Um, and so yeah, I I, I I had it quite easy. I think mm. it's different for footballers now, but I had it quite easy because I had a, I think I had role models my whole life, your whole life right, which has right. helped me. Yeah, no, that's that's beautiful. Well, um, so what would you say was the hardest part then about making it as a professional footballer and adapting to the standards? For me, it was just keeping my calm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally not losing your cool. Yeah, not losing my cool. Um, and I think that goes for a, a lot of people, especially black boys. Like mm. coming, depending on where you're coming from, to come to go into that environment is really, really hard work um, because you're you're now mixing with people who have different sort of opinions, different banter, mm. um, brought up differently to you. <laughs> <laughs> like all this, the cursing and swearing. <laughs> Like I, I couldn't understand this. This like, do you know what I mean? Some of the words they're using, um, and then obviously they've got that that bit where they like to joke around. Where I don't mm -hmm. like to joke yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what's crazy? Like, yeah. I was reading um, Burnley their initiation and their initiation and their fines mm -hmm. is crazy. Mm -hmm. So you get fined, yeah. And you do. You, you turn up late. You either have to dress up as like Batman or Superman yeah. and stand up <laughs> yeah. and like in the middle and to sing a song yeah. or you have to I don't know you have to do something crazy like like eat ketchup with yeah but he's, he's an old school manager yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 
<laughs> he is really an old school manager and to be fair, if you asked me to do that things when I was 16, I would have said no, no way. No way. Um, and, but as you, as you grow up, you sort of... <laughs> and you're in that environment, yeah, you calm down a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You still have to maintain your dignity and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and be who you are. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think it's all a test of your character. And I think, as a young black man especially, I think they, they test your character first. Mm. Like, the, the first thing they do is see your talent and they say, okay, nah, he's talented. Yeah. Now nah, they see his talent. Mm. Like, oh sorry, he's, 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 he's character. character. And if, if your character don't match with your talent, mm. you're not going nowhere. Mm. Mm. You're not going there. It has to be... You have to be level par. You you have to show the same um, character as, as your teammates because it is a team game. Yeah. And no matter how good you are, if you don't fit yeah, within a team, yeah. it reminds me of certain yeah. players like Ravel Morrison, mm -hmm. uh, Nar Ranger, mm -hmm. yeah, something like this. Very mm -hmm. talented ballers. Like they were probably the best in their yeah. in their year and stuff. But mm -hmm. it's the attitude. Yeah, the yeah. attitude. Yeah. Kind the character of that led yeah, them down. Like, um, look, football. It, it messes with your head. It mm -hmm. does mess your head. Mm -hmm. And I, I was speaking to Niv on the way here, and and. Sometimes it takes more than it gives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like it takes a lot more. Than, like what you're getting out of it doesn't um, match up for what it takes from you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In your life and who you are. Some people lose themselves. Mm -hmm. They lose who they are. Um, and then when they finish football, they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, I think with football, you, you just gotta. You gotta. Look, I, I had good friends around me, and it, I really do, and I appreciate all my friends and family. Mm -hmm. I love them so much because without them. I wouldn't probably be able to sit here now and, and probably tell my story. I'd probably um, be trying to, to do things to make, either make money, which is not my concern anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a person who, who, who chases money. Um, I more chase happiness and, and my family is more important to me and, and helping younger kids as well and bringing up other young kids. And I believe if I, if I do the right things, I will be provided for. Um, and, and, yeah, so I've, I've literally just tried to keep myself humble throughout my whole career mm. and anyone that knows me and knows knows my career will tell you the exact same thing um, and that's that's my purpose but I just think when you start football um, it's important to when they test your character to um, not react mm. um, and, and <laughs> like I speak to my kid, I've got boy, four boys and yeah. I always say give yourself five seconds before you speak or you make a decision and, mm. and more than likely that gives you thinking time and when you have that five seconds, you're more than likely you make the right decision. Mm. Are, um, are any of your boys um, in like any professional setups? Or? No, my boys were they were at Millwall and they was at um, Leighton Orient. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Then they're, they're not, but they will if they want to be footballers, they will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old um, are your, your, your I've boys? I've got twin boys that are 16. Oh, nice. Um, and I've got a 12 year old and I've got a 17 year old as well. Oh, wow. They all love football. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the twins out of all of them probably have, have a real good opportunity. Yeah. Not to say the others won't. Yeah. But mm. um, yeah, it's, 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 it's down to them. And I don't mm. really push them, to be mm. honest. No one pushed me. So it has to be something they love doing and something mm. that they want to do. Mm. Wow. So, like, I mean, fast forward over, or no, 100 games in the Premier League. <laughs> like, that's, that's such a, a statement. That is such an accolade <laughs> to have. But for me, like, what was your highlight? We well, you know we'll get to the whole hat trick, and yeah, I'm yeah, sure you've been yeah, asked. Yeah. You've been asked that question <laughs> like, how iconic. many times? So I'm not going to stay too much. Yeah. But what else for you? Like in the hundred games in the Premier League, what was one of the iconic moments for you? What game? It doesn't have to be a game where you scored mm -hmm. or anything like that. Even mm -hmm. like a, a man of the match performance for you. What was it for you that moment? Well, obviously I'm from from Hackney, so mm. um, I, I've always supported Arsenal, and to play at Highbury Ooh, was yeah. absolutely like. Yeah, that was unreal. Is it true about the atmosphere? In, you know. Um. Yeah. I, no. No. I don't think so. No? I don't think so. No. Highbury was. Like, <laughs> Wait. What was it? Highbury Library. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize you had other yeah, supporters. Yeah. Yeah. You got Man United supporters. They're loving it now. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna hear the last one now. Um, <laughs> so, no, funny enough, like the the only stadium that for me that. Sh that sort of puts fear in you was was and I know I hope we've got Anfield. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, you see, come on, don't say stuff like that. Man. <laughs> it was a, yeah, it's a, it is everything they say it is wow. and more. It's wow. everything Crazy. they say it is. But um, yeah, going back to obviously, yeah, I would say to play at Highbury, that was an absolute. That was yeah, that was a pleasure. Mm. But obviously to support Arsenal and, and to score two goals against, I mean we we beat Tottenham two one. Mm. Um, and I remember scoring two goals. And that was quite a, a memorable moment for me. Obviously, always wanting Tottenham to lose, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then 
that being the reason they lost. <laughs> it's, a, um, it's, it's, it's yeah, quite an achievement. That's for a me. flex. Yeah, that's a flex. That is a big flex. That is a big flex. Um, so for you as well, like in the Premier League, is there any? Me, I'm a defender, mm -hmm. so you know, and I pride myself in terms of obviously stopping the striker. But was there any defenders that you came up against that you was like, wow, like you're something else, or you know, you're difficult? I'm gonna go on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> like, I spent most of, most of my career playing against. You can imagine in it the mm. best defenders in the world. Mm. I think mm. the villages, the Rios, the Souls, mm. wow. um, Torre. Um, it can go on and on and on. So Campbell, um, yeah. I, I, to pick one of them, obviously I grew up with Rio. Right. He just, he, I've, I've always played against him. We played against each other. He used to play for Blackheath, I think it is. Now mm -hmm. he played for Hackney and Tal Hamlets. So we've always played against each other. Mm. And he's, um, his development was unbelievable. Um, how quickly he became the, the, the perfect defender. He was. He had mm. pace. Um, he read the game well. Um, he was strong. Um, it, yeah, he, it, him, you got John Terry. I know people, think, but the way he read the game, yeah, these people, yeah. like, you think, yeah, okay, I'm going to get the ball, I'm going to knock it past him because I'm a lot quicker than him. Mm -hmm. And they just read it. They always give themselves the, the right yards to yeah. make sure that they could get in front of you right, and, right. or they, they were close enough yeah. to take it off of you or they gave you enough room so you would make the mistake, but yeah. it was just it, it became a, um, a chess game with yeah. all these defenders. Yeah, yeah. But um, to name one of them, um, probably would have to be Village. I think. Oh wow. Okay. I, I remember playing at the Village, and I remember he just the first two minutes I got the ball, and I was quite good in the air, and he just clapped. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like for the rest of the 85 minutes, all I remember is just staying away from him. <laughs> like, and, when, and no defender would ever do that to me. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I was, you know what I mean? Like, you could hold just, your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, I could hold my own, but. Yeah, yeah. The way he hit me, like, it, was, it was like, if that's how you're going to play all game, <laughs> uh, I think we should, yeah, we leave this to the next game. I European, think. man. Yeah, yeah, tough. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the refs, what you got away with, obviously, in my time, mm. is a lot more than what now. Nah, obviously, in you push someone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that, the challenges. But yeah, I played against people and they would pinch you and they would off the ball, they would kick you off the ball. And mm. you, you, you then, you can't go to the ref and say, ref, you just pinch him and you look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just have to get on with it. And we had to get on with it. But he, yeah, he was something else. And I remember the first time he hit me and I just, and for that whole game, he actually got into my head, and it's the first time in my life. Serious? In, was it the talk? Was it the talking, or was it just the, the presence, the shared presence? No, the kick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't say the word to me. It was the actual lick. When he licked me, that was it. Because like, you know I, mean? I know you get, so, yeah, you, you kind of get, you get, you get those players that talk, and you get like, yeah, no, that, that. Listen to me. That never, would, no one could ever get into get my head. Into head like yeah, regarding mm -hmm. talking or. Smack talk and all that, mm. no one. But um, even with like kicking or physical, like no one could read. But for some reason, like I thought to myself, if that's how you're gonna play your game, like I don't want none of this game. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it was also at Man United, so mm. you oh, don't get you don't get anything cut. Nah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's very true. And I think it was almost the protection is almost like you're protected and then all of a sudden a guard's down and someone could do what they want to you mm. and they can do and they can get away, get with, away it. with it and that's exactly how it is at Old Trafford wow. the players can do what they want to you especially if uh, Ferguson was manager mm. um, Fergie time do you know what I mean like all the referees knew him they all loved him mm. um, they're not going to book one of the players because he kicked a, a, a Charlton player mm. so you just felt you just felt for the whole game they could do what they want to you so it's right. almost like all right, let me just try and get through this game. If you would never had any intention of winning the game, mm. you just wanted to go there and get the game over, <laughs> over, over, over and done with, and then get back on the bus. All right, so. all right. What was um? What about in terms of for you as a striker? You know, top striker. What, what was a player? Was there a player that you emulated or that you looked up to that you could say, you know, oh yeah, I like the way he finishes, or you know, something that you you looked at. Was like a goal. Yeah. Well, uh, Ian Wright, like yeah. his yeah. his movement was ridiculous, mm. and he, he he had that street like you know what I was, like mm -hmm. if someone done something to him, he, he would play twice as hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he had that mentality. No one's gonna get the better of me, mm -hmm. and I think that was the thing I admired about him. Mm. So even if someone was getting the better of him, he wouldn't lose his head. You'd mm -hmm. never see him rant and rave. Mm. You'd see him play better. Mm. 
and I think that's important as a striker. If someone's getting a bit out of you, how can I get the best out of myself mm. to get the best out of him? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like rather than getting too emotional, mm. attached in the game, and then doing something you wouldn't normally do because you're frustrated. Yeah. Um, Ian Wright would always find a way of scoring, and I think as strikers, the only thing you can do when someone's getting the best out of you is score. Yeah. So you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can kick me around for 90 minutes, but if I've scored two goals. At the end of the game, you're going to be upset and yeah, I'm not. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, so, you have the last yeah, his mentality, I think most black um, footballers mm. if, if at my age, if he was, if he ran, or I played with John Barnes, if these were, if they weren't your, what if you weren't your idols, these people, then um, you're probably in the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Did you ever meet them? Did you ever, you know? Oh, we, I mean, I know him right well now. Oh, okay. and, and obviously, I, I played with John Barnes wicked, at, wicked. at Charlton, and yeah, he's a, he's a really good man, and he's. Inspiring, he's a, a reason a lot of um, people, black people, black support people. Liverpool. Yeah. Um, That's and true. I remember telling my mum that I played with John Barnes, and uh, <laughs> she, she was, yeah, she couldn't believe it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. Even I couldn't believe it as well. It's like an icon. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of John Barnes, what did you think of his comments on like Jaden Sancho? I don't know if you heard about it. No, I didn't hear about it. He said basically. When John Barnes was playing, it was, racism was a lot worse than that, and mm. they should be grateful that they, they, they're on a hundred thousand mm -hmm. a week. And because Jason Sansa said he wouldn't, he's not going to play football if racism continues. Mm -hmm. John Barnes like, no, you should be grateful that you're on a hundred thousand. When I was playing, yeah. football, it was a lot worse. You're throwing bananas at yeah. him. Yeah, it's yeah. That's a. That's a <laughs> yeah, so yeah, what should yeah, they do yeah. if they're being racist? Then should he just like take it? Or um, is John Barnes right, or is Jaden Sancho? Different, different areas, isn't it? Yeah. I remember because for you as well. Yeah, what of course. Like yeah, you? yeah, exactly. I mean, so I remember I, I went to church today, and I remember the the the, the, the pastor said to, he was saying about um, trying to take care of your kids, and mm. it's hard to um, be a parent mm. now because your kids are going through different things, isn't it? Yeah. So he's so he's just trying to stamp your authority on your kids and. In a time like this, might Especially be the wrong internet thing. and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It might be the wrong thing to do. So, I think football at the moment is changed from when John Barnes played and when I played. Um, if walking off the pitch is something that he wants to do, mm. then he should do it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be a thing where all black players walk off the pitch if it happens to them. Mm. It should be a personal decision. It should be something like some black players might be thinking, okay, I'm going to score or something. Yeah, exactly. To get yeah, it's up to you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But um, I got, some black players will get racially abused by players they're playing against. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. not just fans. Mm. So um, it has to be it has to be a personal decision, I think, um, whether or not you walk off the pitch. And I don't think anyone should judge a player for making that decision mm. because it might have affected him in a way where he has to walk off the pitch. Yeah. Because he might not be used to it. Yeah. Um, John Barnes obviously got used to it, mm. so he could handle it. Yeah. Um, Sancho might not be used to it, where he's from, what how he's been brought up in the society that we live in at the moment. Mm. Um, he might not have gone through it and then the fact that someone's actually racially abused him it's a surprise might, yeah it might be a surprise yeah. to him and it might have affected him in a way where he has to tell, take himself out of that mm. situation mm. or he might put himself in situations i know footballers that respond and then end up getting in trouble mm. do you know what i mean like a fan says something to a, to a, a player a player says something back to the fan the player gets fined do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. so you've got to, the first thing you've got to do is take care of yourself, innit? Yeah. And if that's the thing that you need to do at that time, mm. do it, mm. do it. And if you if you can handle it, like get on with the game, innit? <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting paid a hundred grand. Yeah. Get on with it. Yeah. I tell you, I tell you the honest truth, I wouldn't walk off the pitch yeah. if I was getting paid a hundred. <laughs> I'm gonna get my bonus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like, I'm gonna get my bonus. Oh yeah, I'm on goal bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I get off the pitch, I'm not getting my goal bonus. So. <laughs> Um, I'm about to score the goal and then get a Yeah, but then the game might get cancelled. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't get your parents' yeah. money. <laughs> There's too many like factors. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it has to be a personal decision. But yeah. me personally, I mean, I've played football and people have said something to me. And um, what do you do on the street if someone calls you a black, whatever? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's not a footballing thing, it's a society yeah, thing. Isn't it? It is, yeah. it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, so what do you do thing. as you're walking out the stadium and someone calls you, are you going to run back in the stadium and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think it has to be a personal decision. If it fixes you that much, like, like you look at Balotelli now, and I think it gets to a point now with Balotelli where he can't handle it. 
And I, if I was Balotelli, I could understand. If someone said Balotelli should stay on the pitch, I would say no. You're talking nonsense. Yeah, yeah, because he's been getting racially lot, abused, yeah. and he's, he's. I don't think he's mentally there yeah. strong enough to handle it yeah. anymore. Mm, I've yeah. seen him on the bench crying mm. after games. Mm. So someone like that, like, might not be able to handle it. So he might have to walk off the pitch. Mm. Um, yeah. And I don't think a manager or teammate should say, look, stay on the pitch. Um, or don't do it, mm-hmm. like the person should go off. Even if the manager wants to sub him, mm. sub him to take him off, mm-hmm. innit? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, but it's not going to stop. It's a society thing, innit? And yeah. obviously, John Barnes is, is well known for. Um, he makes a, a, a outlandish comments. Yeah, but <laughs> all, these, all these comments have come from a place where he's come from, innit? He's come from. Yeah. It's been a lot yeah. more yeah. worse for him. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. when I'm parent, talking to my kids, I never talk to them from where they are now, 2020. Mm. I talk to them from my time growing up yeah. um, and they can't relate to me because they didn't grow up in that time mm. yeah. um, and John Barnes I think he's got a, a right to have his opinion mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we can get into anyone's head and tell them what to do and what not to do regarding yeah. walking 100%, up the pitch. 100% so I, I, obviously I've watched a lot of your interviews and I've, when you've been interviewed as well yourself and at a time where the Charlton faithful wasn't really mm-hmm. on your side how was it for you, obviously you're saying as a black man and that as well, and then mentally, how was that for you coping with that? Because you seemed a lot, very positive. Whenever people would ask you about it, you know, you always remain optimistic mm-hmm. and positive. Was that the truth or was there moments where it actually did get to you? Yeah. I got to me all the time. Right. Because as I said to you, going back to the beginning of mm-hmm. our conversation about um, it being a family, mm-hmm. um, that was the time for me when I realised actually, no, it's a business. They can turn against yeah, you at any yeah. moment. Yeah, um, because mm. it was going really well up until that point. Um, mm. Us as a club, as a team, although I weren't probably getting the goals I, sh- I should have been getting or wanted to get, mm. as a team we were doing well. Yeah, We weren't losing games, um, we were playing well, we were beating the big teams. Mm. Um, so I just felt like, yeah, it was. It felt like it was sort of a, a more of a personal attack mm. rather than actually it being about football. Mm. Mm-hmm. But um, as I get older, um, I say to any boys that I coach now, like if you're a striker mm. and you're not scoring goals, you're gonna get abused. Yeah. Like you're, at some point, if the team starts losing, that's when you'll see the, the real, the true, yeah, the true, you know yeah. what I mean. And then, and then people will start judging you on your goals rather than how you're performing. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it 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 got to me a lot. It, it really did. Um, was there anyone sorry to cut you? But was there was there support there for you? Was there anyone that you know like? Said, you know, keep your head out, you'll be all right. I think everyone does it, your teammates do, Mm. your managers do, but um, as much as people tell you that when you're at home and you're by yourself, Mm. these thoughts just go through your head Mm. and Mm -hmm. the problem is you relive these games Mm. over and if you truly love the game, Mm. um, that's all you think about. Like, it's the the first thing you think about when you wake up, it's Mm. the the last thing you think before you go to sleep. So it is, it's, it's, it's a constant, mm. so there's it's no break, there's no sort of, I'm going to go with my family and forget about it. Yeah. Like The minute you get that minute silent, mm. you're thinking about it again. Mm. And I think that's the um, that's the thing about football, um, as I said to you before, it takes much it takes more. It, more it, yeah, because you. it takes your time away from your family, even yeah. when you're with your family. Yeah. Um, even when you're together, you're, not, you're emotionally still invested in the game mm-hmm. that probably happened. I don't know, 70 hours ago or, or yeah. two or a week ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it doesn't give you, and then you, you sort of separate, take your time away from your kids. Mm. So you're, you're talking, you're with your kids, but you're not with you're them. You're not with them 100%. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they're not, that's a bit unfair as well when your family, but um, yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's harder now because of the media and I'm yeah, so I'm glad. Yeah, I literally about to ask mm. you about that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad I'm not playing football <laughs> in this time. Do you think it's a lot more worse than it was before? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm in towards the back of my career. Mm. Someone said something to me on Twitter and it's, your mum, this, that and that, and I just came off Twitter. <laughs> just, I just, yeah, just, I just, I just came off. I literally just, I literally just came off. Because I, I thought to myself, it's going to get to a point where I'm going to say something mm. and then I'm going to want to find him <laughs> and then I'm going to ask, because I know what supporter you are, then I spent yeah. like, my whole life looking for this one person. Um, so you imagine then not huh? saying like, if you've got Instagram or Twitter, like to either, either not have it or just like block off yeah. the comments. It's, it's similar to the um, walking off the pitch, innit? If you can handle it, then mm. keep, keep yeah. on it. If you can't handle it, mm. get your yeah, ass off. Yeah. You really do, it, because that, emotionally it will, it, will, it will eat you up. Is that, because obviously I know you work with young people, you've got your, your academy, is that mm. a big message? Is that a big thing in your academy as well in terms of handling the social media, you know, the do's and don'ts? Do you have that kind of... So what I, I try and encourage my, the kids is, mm. and I was speaking to my friends about it the other day as well, mm. it's just 
like if you are going to be on Twitter and you're going to be that, like, like I think it's important just to keep connections with your good friends. It's it's, in, it's important to talk. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on? Mm. Like if someone says something to you and it's hurt you, um, just pick up the phone in it and call yeah. your friend and say mm. like this. I yeah. <laughs> said this. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. And, and then he might be able to or she might be able to give you an opinion on it and then it might actually calm you down. Mm. Um, because I think the first thing we've got to do is take care of ourselves. Of course. Um, of course. Even though with all this social media, the, the most important part is is your soul. That's it. Um, and and not letting anyone like disturb your soul. Yeah. Um, so it's it's so important like to have good friends around you, and mm. and it's the blueprint of my of my my footballing career and my life to make sure I have um, people who who are secure around me and um, they're not there one minute and not there when I need them mm -hmm. um, so yeah the social media bit I think I'm, I've, I've, I'm not really a, a social media I've, I use all my things for my football mm -hmm. and then on my other account I just do my family yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not about I don't really talk about my career on social media mm. I more talk about the things I'm doing and um, how positive it is to have a family mm. that's, that's, that's my message to, to people I don't really go on it about football because I don't really want to hear anyone's opinions mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care so um, uh, yeah I, 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 I look at like I, I saw for instance Rashford um, mm. after I think a game when when Man United lost mm -hmm. and he and the first thing he did was went on tw um, Instagram and said yeah we're sorry about that result um, we're giving our hardest we're gonna and I'm thinking to myself this can only end badly <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean like it can only yeah. end badly yeah. why do you have to do that yeah. like why not just go home and mm. practice on yeah. so then obviously then you look at then you look at the comments mm. and say he's got abuse. 60 yeah he's 600 yeah. Mm. 500 of them are, are people abusing him yeah. what is the point in that isn't it yeah if you really want to show them that 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 you're behind the club and you want to work so next game perform mm. do you know what i mean like you don't always have to to show tell the or tell the, the world, world that you're gonna yeah that you're gonna do something do something do you think that um the league should like invest in like mentors like for the younger generation that are coming up i think they should but they're not in it no money in there for them there's no money. These kids are always gonna keep on coming through. They're always gonna keep on making their money, mm -hmm. whether or not they're mentally strong or not. Mm -hmm. So whether whether or not they're mentally strong or not is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. As long as these boys are playing football, yeah, um, and they're producing, mm. they, they, they they, yeah, about. anything that I think anything they football invest in, I think they they they'll probably want something out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So unless they can see something, yeah, monetize uh, yeah, money. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but but it is sad, and it definitely should be something. Um, it's definitely something the the league should look into with all the money they make mm -hmm. um, to take a a change of that yeah. and, and invest in our young kids' mm. um, health and men because when these boys finish football they're all going to be in problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like ninety percent of them now yeah, yeah. are going to be messed up. For mm. you, was you, would you say that you was you had problems when you finally came out of the scene? Like obviously, I know you still kick ball, you still mm. involved in football, mm. but how was it for you? You know, saying. When you first retired, I think, mm. was it at Barnet? Or yeah, so when I left Barnet, um, I went to Whitehall just for a little while. Mm. And then, then obviously, pre-season started and mm. I didn't have a club. And then I made that decision to, um, well, I did, well, people made the decision that, you know, <laughs> that, um, that I weren't going to be at another club. Um, and yeah, that was probably the, probably the worst six months of my life. Wow. Um, I slept probably three weeks straight. Wow. Three weeks straight, and I could sleep at will. So if I closed my eyes, I could sleep. I didn't have any routine anymore. Right. Um, and at the time, I just thought I was tired, but I was actually a little bit depressed, um, right. and without even knowing about without it. Knowing, yeah. yeah, without yeah. knowing about it. And I listened to Paul Merson the other day. I don't know if you see. Mm -hmm. He saw yeah. it. He was gambling and, and that. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing that stood out, what he said, was ignoring phone calls. Um, mm. um, and not and not, not talking, not talking about yeah, it. Yeah, and not talking about it. Um, mm. And anyone that's, it's only when I listen to him, I probably thought, yeah, actually, I was going through similar things. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like that, you you end up ignoring the phone calls. Yeah. But then because of that, you get deeper and deeper into yeah. the depression. And the minute you actually put yourself out there, mm. um, and for me, what changed me, I decided I was going to go gym again. Mm. So I went to spin class. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got friends with five old men. Yeah. Like, they were like 60 odd, 70 odd <laughs> men. But it became a routine. I'll drop the kids to school and then I'll go and see them and we'll talk to them. But they actually, these five men actually got me out of depression. Yeah. And I didn't, I only realized it 
a year later. Wow. I only realised it a year later. Wow, wow. Um, and I meet up with them all the time now. Brilliant. But I just, and it's only because they knew what I was, and now I look back at it, they knew what I was going through mm. without speaking about it. Mm. So I remember some of the questions they would ask me and some of the conversations we would have, and I'd be like, why are they asking me this? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. But they, they knew what I was going through. Mm. And, and and sometimes the best thing you could do is just talk in it yeah, without being judged um, and without like, like thinking someone's thinking, okay, well, yeah, yeah, he's a bit weak right now. Or people thinking bad of you. They didn't. They had no opinion on me. All they wanted to do was make sure I was okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I went through it, and it was the hardest time of my life. Wow. The um, hardest time of my life. I got four boys as well and one girl, um, and I had almost no time for them as well, mm. which is why I started doing what I'm doing. Mm. Um, because more than anything else, it keeps me sane. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, of course. So, um, yeah, it was... It, Merson, I remember watching his show the other day and I just thought, Jesus. And I, I just think the more... Even listening to his show the other day, I just mm. thought, you know what? I'm going to make it my job this year to That's even it. be a, a better friend, husband, mm -hmm. whatever, mentor, whatever, mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to make sure we can help as many people as possible. Mm. No, amen. Mm. Amen to that, man. It's just quickly, I wanted to touch on, I read, or I don't know if it's true, that you used to suffer from, is it nosebleeds? Is that true? No, or? no, I had, a, I had a tumour. Right. I so, read about that. Yes. And how, obviously, I don't want to go into depth because we haven't got much time, mm. but you're saying that, was that... A, a big part as well in terms of the depression or was that it's funny you say that because i was i was only feeling but thinking about that two days after i think Seriously. two days ago um because i actually yeah, but just before that time mm. there's a time i was difficult time at the child and i was actually thinking you know what i don't even want to do this no more mm. with football mm. i just thought you know what i can't be asked to do it no more and then funny enough i got the tumor about three weeks after that wow. and then i remember laying down in the hospital and all i could think about was my health mm. And then thinking about if I come out of this, like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what am I gonna do? Yeah. And and then it just made me realise how insignificant football was. Right, compared to yeah, how life like, is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm being so selfish thinking about this football, but I've got my kids mm. and I've got my family, I've got mm. my friends, and it just, I think from then my football career just shot up because yeah. I, as, sorry, as I sorry. came back. I came back from football, I became a better player because I didn't put much pressure on myself about football and I yeah. didn't really care what anyone else would say about yeah. me, innit? Like, I was healthy. That's it. Um, it took seven, eight, nine months to get rid of this, this tumour. Okay. Um, I remember at the operation table, like, my, I couldn't even re didn't even recognise my face was like that. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously, I'm not going to go into the details, mm -hmm. but they had to do a lot of work on my face, so... Wow. Um, and I thought to myself, well, why am I complaining about football? Like, mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, really? Like, That's do you know it. what I mean? And I think from then, if you look at my goal ratio, I think at the time I probably had like 20 goals. And then from from that time onwards, I got 100 odd yeah, goals. Yeah, yeah. Um, just literally because I just I, I realised what was important to yeah, me. Yeah. And, I, and I think a lot of footballers don't. They don't. Uh, until something like that. Until they get a reality check. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I honestly believe, I, I believe that God put me in that position at that mm. time to make me realise or appreciate what mm. I had mm. um, and through that like my career and as a person I've changed as a person mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. I'm much more positive and yeah. it's harder to get under my skin yeah, for as real. my wife will tell you <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really re I'm a real relaxed person now right. um, and whenever I I lose that I always go back to that moment mm. and put myself back into that moment um, and it, it's like a wake up course like a recharge right that is very deep, it's very deep. Um, obviously, we haven't got much time left, so, I mean, we're going to probably fire off some questions off the dome. Please, like, cut, you know, Lola, obviously, ask the question, mm. you know, shout Sammy and that, but for me, it's like, in terms of your legacy, what is the, the last thing that you want to be leaving? Like, in terms of when someone hears your name, Kevin Lesley, mm. what is it, the things that they want to, yeah. you want to leave their impression on? That's, that, that's enough, that's a question I often ask myself, and I think that most people should, I think most people, as you, even as you're going through life, you should mm. ask yourself, like, what do I want to leave in it? And, mm. and I look back, I went to a, a funeral last year of one of my youth team, um, my youth club workers. Right. And in his eulogy, someone was speaking and um, and they mentioned me in it as well, what he did wow. for me. Um, and I thought to myself, you know what, like, he would always live because of what he's done for me and my friends. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like, so mm -hmm. if I can do the exact same thing, when I'm passed away, if, if someone who has um, no connection to me mm. can mention me 
or people who whose lives were bad mm. and have changed because of what I've done. Mm. If that's if I could leave with just that, mm. that not including my kids because that's my job in it. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but if I can help other people, because it's easy to do your kids, it's, it's even harder to do other people's kids. Mm. Um, if I can leave, if, if, if four or five kids could say, look, he changed my life, mm. because I think it's unrealistic to to think you can change everyone's mm. life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, but if I'm gonna be realistic, if I can get four to five kids um, to say, you know, what, he changed my life. And they could be better people, mm. and they can change someone's life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it, it grows, isn't it? Like, That's it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it goes from him changing mine to me changing five. Yeah. From them, one of those five, to, and it becomes yeah. twenty-five, and yeah. it becomes fifty, and it. That's do you know it. what I mean? That's it. Um, so that would that would probably be top of my list. Right. Wow. Wow. Um, mm. Obviously, you said you got all your kids. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the boys are playing football. Mm. Would you, if your daughter wants to do it as well, would she be interested in it? What would you kind of? Yeah, she used to play in football. In terms of that. Yeah, she used to play football, and then obviously she got old. <laughs> she's 21 now. Yeah. She's 21 now. So yeah, if she wanted to, I'd love it. I'd absolutely love it. Mm. I had a conversation with um, one of my friends the other day. Some 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 woman that I know, and she's having a baby, and um, she's having it's her second child. And I said, "Oh, what does your, your husband want a boy?" And she's like, "Why does he want a boy for? Girls can play football too." <laughs> and I was like, "I just asked if you want a boy." <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, no, of course. Like, listen to me. My girl played football. I would love. I watch women's football. I watch the World Cup. Good. I watch Arsenal all the time. I watch Chelsea. Whenever it's on telly, I've got the the women's um, yeah. mm. the women's league recorded. Mm. So I watch that every Sunday mm. night. So I love football. Mm. And, like, I'm a football lover. Are you actually a gooner? You support Arsenal? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just mean because obviously I want what do you think quickly briefly on how Arsenal getting on with Arteta are you happy with Arteta come on I have to I have to ask how do you feel with Arteta and that kind of I, I think he'll only it'll be judged once he brings in a few players right. yeah at the moment we are like that squad he's got any time we lose a game, it won't be his fault. Mm. It, it, like, it, it, he needs to get his players in, and then you'll see what sort of manager he is, mm. depending on the players he brings mm -hmm. in. Lacazette, do you rate him as a... <laughs> no, no, wait, no, no, because he's a striker, yeah. and he's a top striker, mm. Lesby, so he'll mm. know. When you look at Lacazette, obviously, do you think he is a good striker? Because a lot of people question him and they say, oh, he's mm. not getting his goals, and you know, like he's, 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 not, good, he's not that good. Mm. Do you think, when you look at Lacazette, do you rate him highly as a striker? So, if you're looking at it like is it in a bang mm. like I would, if you've asked me, which, if, would you ask me which one would I rather play? Yeah. I would rather, if he had one up front, play Lacazette. Okay. I'd rather play Lacazette because I think he brings a lot more to the team. Okay. I watch a Bamian play sometimes, and if he doesn't score, he's not doing much. That's it. And that is, it's quite important. It's for instance, you look at Guardiola mm -hmm. when he first came into Man City. Aguero was scoring lots of goals, mm. but he wasn't bringing much to the team, so mm -hmm. he dropped him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so I, I just believe in today's society, in today's strikers, can't, they can't be just finishers. That's it. They have to be able have to, to contribute more. Yeah, they have yeah. to bring a lot more. Yeah. In order to in order to win like leagues and cups and that, mm. I think you need that striker who can um, who can do a lot more than score. Okay. Absolutely. Even though he's not scoring. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, yeah, but he, at the moment he's low on confidence. Yeah. If, if I was to play Lacazette and a Bangyam and they're both on fire and both on red, I'd play Lacazette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. of what he does. Yeah. And quickly, in terms of winning, who do you think will win the league this season? Is that even a question? Hey, big man! Big man! Serious question. Listen to me, I dislike Liverpool. I hate everything about them. But listen to me, if someone gives anyone a grand now and says put it on a team, it's, it's Liverpool, it's Liverpool yeah. Yeah. Believe, yeah. Um, question, so you see um, your international career, what made you choose Jamaica over England? Mm. Was it the, the fact that you think, was it a case where you thought England might not give you a, a call up or did you just think you just... Well, I think when, so when players, like everyone I spoke to, Dean Burton and everyone, Jamie Lawrence, that's, that played for Jamaica. Yeah. Um, I don't even think England like came into mind. I don't think okay. we. I don't think like I felt I fit that build. Yeah. Like an, as an England player, yeah. um, I think they've got a, a certain reception of mm -hmm. what they're what playing. They yeah, yeah. And I don't think I'm it. Okay. And it never even crossed my mind to play for England. To be honest, okay. Okay. as soon as Jamaica called up, it weren't a thing of. Oh, if I play for Jamaica, I won't be able to play for England. Mm -hmm. It was never that. Right. That was. It didn't even cross your mind. It was like um, Jamaica when you like. That's it. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. um, it was never. Yeah, England weren't even in the 
in the equation. Okay, mm. so if, if England called you up and Jamaica called you up, would you still have gone for England um, for Jamaica? No, everyone would have gone for England. No, I'm going to be as honest as you. Yeah, like, yeah. There would be no English Jamaican player in this country that would choose Jamaica over England. Yeah. Um, I don't think... Yeah, mm. I don't think any other... I, I don't think... Like Sancho, so if, if he had the, the chance to please for for Germany or England, mm-hmm. I think he would play England. Mm-hmm. I just think it's more lucrative. lucrative. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think mm-hmm. the money you once you play for an England team, you're yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think and I think players do look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, yeah, England's England's England. It we're supposed yeah. to be the best, but we're not. But we still have got that persona of being. Mm-hmm. Top and I think, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm. And I think through that, your career can actually shoot shoot up as well. All right. And just finally, Messi or Ronaldo? Ah, oh, <laughs> Messi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're doing> well. <laughs> <laughs> Natural footballers. He is, he is. <laughs> Um, listen, guys. For some reason, the time has gone so quickly. Yeah, but first, trust. yeah. But first and foremost, I'd love to thank Kevin Lisby uh, for coming down, for taking the time out of his busy career, you know, to come and speak to us. We really do appreciate, it, honestly. I'm like, you know, just getting to know you even more on a deeper level. Like, I've got so much, even more respect for you, not just as a professional, but also as a human being. Do you understand? So, um, thank you very much. Uh, this is the back page. Please make sure you follow, like and subscribe and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time guys. Thank you. Peace.